The step up is a fundamental exercise that will build strength, power, and also stability as each leg is worked independently of the other. Although it's a simple exercise, it's also full of nuances, as subtle changes in position and movement can have a significant effect on the outcome. Let's look at the subject's starting position. The first thing to note is that his body is pitched and inclined forward. This is necessary in order to get his weight aligned over the lead foot. A common mistake with the step up is to begin the exercise with the weight too far back and the trunk erect. This positions the center of gravity either at the heel of the lead foot or even off the step, forcing the subject to use the back leg in order to propel himself up onto the step. This defeats the purpose of the exercise, which is to strengthen the leg that's on the step. There is one noticeable flaw in this exercise, as indicated by the yellow circle. As you can see, the subject has moved his weight so far forward that his heel has come up off the step. This has two effects on the exercise. First, it moves the line of force forward on the foot, and second, it reduces the base of support so that the subject will be less stable throughout the movement. The subject will initiate the movement by pushing down into the step, in this case through the ball of his foot. The reactive component will be vertical and the individual joint torques will be the product of the magnitude of that reactive force and the perpendicular distance from the joint centers to the line of force. Because the magnitude of the force is the same at every joint, the difference in torque is essentially determined by the length of those perpendicular distances. As you can see from the illustration, the hip is under the greatest torque load, followed by the ankle, and then the knee. This is not necessarily the most balanced configuration. Nevertheless, the subject is still able to execute the movement. From the top of the step, we can witness another problem with the execution of this exercise. The subject begins his descent by dropping his hip straight down. Consequently, his knee will be pushed forward. In this position, all of the load will be on the knee. There probably isn't enough stress to cause any acute problems, but over time, Repeated stress of this nature could contribute to knee pain. Let's see how the subject performs this movement, but watch carefully because it's very subtle. Now, let's observe a more effective step up, but keep in mind there are very minor differences between these two movements. This time, the subject begins with his weight a little farther back. In doing so, he places the center of effort right over the middle of his foot. The reactive force, consequently, has also moved back, which changes the magnitudes of the torques affecting each of the joints. Now, as you can see, there's a slightly smaller torque at the ankle, with a better balance of loading between the hip and knee. In all, this is a better position from which to begin, and will lead to more effective development over time. Finally, we'll look at a properly executed descent. If you watch carefully, you'll see that the hip moves back and down instead of straight down. This ensures that the hip is engaged from the beginning, creating balanced work between the hip extensors and knee extensors. As we've seen here, even the most basic exercise can be difficult to manage because the differences between good and bad execution are sometimes hard to spot. But a fundamental knowledge of biomechanics, along with a trained critical eye, will help any coach manage their clients to success.